Hi folks, Steve Califf here for Fataba Video Update. In this segment, we're going to be talking about the GY520 Gyro. This little 6.9 gram wonder revolutionized the gyro world about a year ago when it was released. The main th topic that we're going to be discussing is the CIU2 and how to utilize this USB interface and the GYLink software on the computer to set each of the parameters that the GY520 has available to it. We're going to take a look at the GYLink software. We've plugged our gyro into the GYLink through the USB port, which is the CIU2. First two things we're going to see here, these are not things that we need to worry about. The ID is set automatically by the gyro. Each gyro has a unique ID assigned to it. Coming down here to flight mode, we have two different flight modes, the F3C mode and the 3D mode. These determine the or set the overall feel of the gyro. The F3C mode is a little more gentle feeling. The 3D mode is a very aggressive initial setup. You'll want to only go into here um, if you are extremely aggressive in your 3D flying. Most guys in the U.S. are using this gyro in the F3C mode. Servo mode is where we just quickly determine what type of servo we're using. We have digital 1520 millisecond, we have digital 760 millisecond, and of course we have the analog mode because you can use this gyro with analog servos. Under gyro reverse, that's our normal reversing, just determines uh, the uh, actual direction of the gyro. Mounting surface is unique to this gyro. If you're mounting the gyro uh, with it facing up, you'll want it set on the upper side, and if you uh, are mounting it with it facing down, you'll set it on the bottom side. Then we come up to response setting. We have a fast, a standard, and a slow. Again, most guys are gonna be running this in the standard setting. If you go to fast, this is going to be extremely aggressive tail stops. If you go into the fast mode, use this very carefully and proceed carefully to determine that you're not going to damage your machine on a very fast tail stop. When we get into control response, this actually sets the delay operations and you can set right and left separately. When you increase the value, the delay is going to increase. When you decrease it, the delay will decrease. So if you get a lot of rebound on a tail stop, you'll want to increase the value just a little bit to try to dial that rebound out. AVCS response mode is our heading hold settings. We have the ability to set both right and left in and out. This adjusts the tail operation response speed. When the set value is increased, the response speed decreases. In is the delay setting when the rudder stick is moved left and right from the neutral position. And of course, out is the delay setting when the rudder stick is returned to the neutral position from left and right. The left and right in out delay can be set separately. So the uh, rudder operation and the rebound feeling can be dialed into exactly what you want it to be. Here we go down to pirouette consistency, and this selects the overall feeling for your pirouettes. You'll have to play with this a little bit to get it just exactly where you want it to be. EXP is our expo settings. This is the same type of thing that you would set from your transmitter. We have both two modes here for your two different flight conditions. So we have the normal mode and the AVCS or heading hold mode. Remember with Fataba systems, if you go into the negative numbers, that is going to be your softer feeling around neutral. So we'll typically, if we're going to set an expo, we're going to be in the softer feel. AVCS settings up here are our yaw rates and our gain and our range. What our yaw rate's going to do for us is set the rotational speed of the gyro or of the tail itself. If we increase this, then we're going to get a lot faster rotational speed. With the initial setting of 100 here in the F3C mode, we're going to see about 450 degrees per second. If we're in the 3D mode, we're going to be at 720. The uh, GY520 is capable of 800 degrees per second. So again, you're going to want to set this very carefully. Range is going to affect the amount the servo throws. At 300, we're going to be seeing about 30 degrees of servo throw. When we get into D gain, this is the differential gain and dampening. 
So if we want to increase the gain value for differential, we'll simply run that number up. And of course, the dampening, we can run that up or down depending on how the tail feels. Now, when we get down to the limits here, this is kind of a unique and easy, very easy way to set your limits up on the tail. Uh, we're going to go to a split screen here so you can see both the tail of the helicopter and what I'm doing on the, uh, on the computer. So to begin this setting, we simply click Enter, and then we're going to set our first limit position. And what we're going to want to do is to move this over and to get max throw, but not binding. You can see I went to the end, and now I backed off a little bit. Now I'll click Set, and I'll go to the other direction. Again, I'm going to go all the way over to the end, and I'm going to back off just a little bit. Um, until we uh, aren't hitting anything, and I'll click set again. So now we've, we've set everything up, and we're ready to send the information to the gyro. All that we have to do now is click right. It's loading the gyro. You can see that we've uh, succeeded here. We click that OK, and we're done. Now what I like to do is to, to hit read now, read that information back from the gyro, make sure that all my settings have changed, and then of course you can go up to your file and save the settings. Hope you enjoyed this quick look at the GY520 Gyro utilizing the CIU2 USB interface to allow it to use the GY Link software and set all the various parameters of the GY520. So for Photography Video Update, I'm Steve Califf. We'll see you next time.